so I'm Henrik Larsson. I'm based in Sweden. Uh, I live in a, in a city called Örebro, uh, and I'm a professor of psychiatric epidemiology at Örebro University. I'm also affiliated to Karolinska Institutet. And I'm here today to talk about time span. Time span uh, stands for management of chronic cardiometabolic disease and treatment discontinuity in adult ADHD patients. So the idea here is to uh, present very early on just an overview of the underlying ideas of uh, time span. It's a presentation about who we are and what we will work on during the coming uh, five years. So please interrupt me if you have questions uh, along the way. Otherwise, you can save, it, save them to the end. And so I want to start off by saying that uh, time span clearly builds on previous successful EU projects, such as uh, the COCA project, which also focused on ADHD, and also it would be nice as you recently saw a presentation of. It also uh, builds on previous clinical and research networks such as Unithidis and the Impact Network. I'm sure some of you have heard about these uh, networks slash organizations. And it also uh, heavily built on uh, involvement of patient organizations. What you see here on this slide is uh, people involved in time span. So this photo was taken uh, at our kickoff meeting that took place uh, a bit less than one year ago when we started off. So time span uh, kicked off in April, 2021. Uh, we are uh, a quite large consortia. Uh, we have a lot of people involved primarily from uh, Europe, as you can see here on this map, uh, people, uh, researchers from Sweden, Norway, uh, Denmark, Iceland, et cetera, et cetera. But we also have a researcher involved from uh, United States, uh, Hong Kong, as well as Australia. My, uh, I think it's appropriate to ask, why did we decide to focus on adult ADHD and cardiometabolic disease. So if we put it very simple and concrete, I think it's clear if we look at previous research, a number, a, large, a very large number of studies have provided a lot of information about ADHD and psychiatric comorbidity. And I think you heard that and learned a lot about that in the previous presentation. And Based on that knowledge, uh, based on the detailed knowledge about psychiatric comorbidity in ADHD, clinical guidelines has been developed to help mental health teams to build up expertise on how they should diagnose and treat individuals with ADHD and co-occurring problems. When it comes to ADHD and cardiometabolic disease, we know much less but recently uh, emerging evidence have started to build up and indicate that there are associations uh, between ADHD and cardiometabolic disease. And when I say associations, I mean that individuals with ADHD have a higher risk of developing cardiometabolic disease. It doesn't mean that all individuals with ADHD develop cardiometabolic disease, it just means that there is an increased risk and we need to understand uh, that in more detail. So uh, what you see here is research from my own team and this research uh, sort of builds up for time span. Uh, this research was important because it was, uh, this was one of the first studies that demonstrated that individuals with ADHD do not only tend to have other psychiatric diagnoses, they're also at higher risk of having type 2 diabetes and hypertension, 
as you can see on this slide to the right. Our previous research also, I'm citing myself here, uh, also from Sweden using uh, large uh, register-based studies. So these studies demonstrated that the prevalence of obesity is higher in individuals with ADHD compared to individuals without ADHD. And finally, very recent, uh, very recent results. Again, a study from the Swedish uh, register based, uh, the Swedish registers. So this slide and this figure demonstrate that individuals with ADHD have a higher prevalence of cardiovascular disease across the lifespan. So we see it already early on, but it's of course very rare early on, as you can see, uh, among people with ADHD between 18 and 30, the prevalence of cardiovascular disease is about 6%, but it's uh, higher than what it is for uh, individuals without, AD, without ADHD. When we grow older, cardiovascular disease becomes much more common in the population, but it also becomes more common among people with ADHD. So uh, we think that it's important to take this, uh, this information, this knowledge forward. We think it's important that uh, we develop treatment guidelines about how we should manage and take care of cardiometabolic disease in individuals with ADHD, because that is currently lacking. So, the overarching objective of time span is really to uh, develop an advanced understanding of the management of adult ADHD and co-occurring cardiometabolic disease. So I have on this slide put two uh, figures to illustrate what the focus is in time span. So if you first look on the left hand side, you see uh, you see how I try to illustrate how, how research about how ADHD links up with cardiometabolic disease. That is very important. We, have, we are doing that too. And that is in particular important to identify new uh, intervention targets. So that type of research is typically done first to demonstrate is ADHD associated with cardiometabolic disease? If so, why? What is it that explains this association? And that could be things like physical activity, unhealthy lifestyle, uh, and other things. And that type of research is super important to sort of break the link between ADHD and cardiometabolic disease via uh, interventions. But the focus, is on time, the focus in time span is to improve the management. So the starting point here is that there are individuals who have ADHD and a, cardio, and a cardiometabolic disease. And what we want to understand better is the prognosis and outcomes and the treatment of those that have both of these uh, conditions, both ADHD and cardiometabolic disease. So this is a very, very busy slide, but I, I will uh, help you through and explain. So individuals uh, that have ADHD and also cardiometabolic disease, they typically receive lots of different multidisciplinary treatment approaches. They just receive pharmac uh, pharmacological treatment of different types for psychiatric problems and also for cardiometabolic problems. They also receive uh, non-pharmacological -pharm treatments, smoking cessation programs, perhaps quite rarely, but bariatric surgery could be another thing, dietary interventions, etc. And our overarching hypothesis is that an approach, a multidisciplinary treatment approach that is characterized by one size fits all, 
or sort of a trial and error approach might lead to adverse effects and treatment discontinuity. But if we, on, a, on the other hand, optimize and personalize the different multidisciplinary treatment approaches that are available, we predict that it will lead to better management, better prognosis, and better outcomes. So that is overall the, the, the purpose of time span to improve the management for individuals with ADHD and cardiometabolic disease. So why is that important? Why, why, uh, why, is, why is that important? It is primarily important because there are a lot of knowledge gaps around this area. There has been too little research this far in this area. And knowledge about the effectiveness, the safety of ADHD medication, when it's combined with uh, treatments for cardiometabolic disease, that uh, knowledge is limited. Secondly, we still know much too little about the, the underlying reasons for ADHD treatment discontinuity. And finally, and thirdly, we know very little, a little about high-risk groups or on the one hand, poor cardiometabolic outcomes in ADHD. And on the other hand, we know very little about high-risk groups for ADHD medication treatment. So the purpose of time span is to address and focus on these knowledge gaps. And we primarily plan to do that using unique data sources from many countries. If you remember in the beginning of the presentation, I talked a lot about register-based studies from Sweden. Registers and electronic health record databases does not only exist in Sweden. Now they exist in many different countries, in Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Iceland, the Netherlands, UK, etc. And time span uh, is built up to use data from many different countries that differ in their underlying, I mean, the healthcare systems in these different countries differ. So we think it's, we think that is optimal in order to address our research question so that we, we study ADHD and cardiometabolic disease using data from different countries with different healthcare systems. We also, this is quite technical, but we also plan to develop and implement new tools uh, for data management, because as you might, uh, as you might think, we will in time span handle a lot of data, millions of data points. And in such situations, it's important to uh, develop new and efficient tools to handle such big data sources. We also plan to develop new analytical te technology. And here I'm there just to mention an example. In time span, we plan to use machine learning approaches. Uh, and we plan to apply that on our uh, in, the in the data from the different countries to come up and build prediction models. Prediction models in relation to poor cardiometa cardiometabolic outcomes and also uh, treatment discontinuity. And finally, another uh, novel aspect of time span is that we will use uh, interesting and novel uh, genomic approaches. Uh, molecular genetic approaches to understand the main purpose of that is to understand the biological underpinnings of treatment discontinuity, which relates to uh, lack of treatment response. So the idea is, is really to develop an, an advanced understanding so that we can improve the management of uh, individuals that suffers from ADHD and cardiometabolic disease 
and also to improve the understanding of ADHD treatment discontinuity. Can I, can I ask you a question? Uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, the, the results, because this is a huge project, and uh, when do you think first results can be shared with Europe, let's say? Uh, I think, so this far we have, I mean, the situation here in time span is a bit different compared to Candy. So in time span, we are using existing data sources uh, quite a lot. So we will actually be able to have results quite soon. We have already uh, submitted two manuscripts from time span. And so I, I expect results uh, during this year. And then it will continue from this year and four to five years onwards. But, but given that we are actually using data that already exists, and many of the partners in time span have used these type of data sources in research in the past. So we are, we are quite ready to get started. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great because what I really appreciate counts for the other projects that were uh, presented today also, but that we cooperate about what is a standard term dissemination, but as you know, we are already in contact as ADHD Europe. We, we try to, to influence the way you super scientists uh, communicate your results to us because uh, I was listening in a, in a way the language you use, it's really fantastic, but I have an IT background, so data management does say me something, but a lot of people are data management, what's that? And then uh, words like cardiovascular, if you can even pronounce them, what, what was it cardio, was it vascular, and it's ADHD, you see? So for the people who are listening in, it's for those with ADHD or caregivers or scientists, uh, please realize that we are really working on how to communicate that people with ADHD can understand what all these scientists do for us, because you do it for us. You are our, our provider of new knowledge. And uh, also how caregivers like psychiatrists, psychologists can really implement it. Uh, because am I right, uh, Henrik, that there is also a part implementation of the results in the project? Absolutely. So we, we, we have a, a, a dissemination work package, if that is what you're meaning. And we, yeah. the idea is that we will work very closely with, with uh, ADHD Europe uh, on that, on different dissemination aspects. And I guess this is, today is an early kickoff yeah. uh, for that. Yeah, well, thank you, uh, Hendrik, for doing this kickoff with us. And we sure will have you back in one of our webinars, meetings, whatever, somewhere in Europe. So hope to see you soon.